All right, so the purpose of this video is because I got tired of these old controllers that, uh, that are worn out and the buttons don't work or they're unresponsive. And I know they make rebuild kits, but I don't really trust all these uh, rebuild kits. I don't know where they get the materials from, if it's junky Chinese or not. And I've seen new controllers cost up to several hundred dollars a piece. from uh, 1985, but so what I wanted to try and do is order the NES, uh, I was curious if the NES mini controllers would work, and um, so what I did is actually have one right here that I've already done, um, and you can see here's the uh, NES mini style plug, which is totally different from the original NES controller, but believe it or not, uh, I guess Nintendo followed the exact same molds that are in the uh, for the Nintendo controller for the NES Mini. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick little rebuild and show you the differences between an old school Nintendo controller, the new NES Mini, well this is actually the old chill, and then a, a cheap Chinese knockoff, which is trash. So let's get started. Unboxing here. Let's go ahead and open up a brand new NES Mini controller. If I can get it open. All right, let's get this out of the box. Throw that to the side. And there we go. Here's a brand new one. So, uh, so here's an old here's an old school one right here. And uh, let me go ahead and just take the screws off. Give me just a second. All right, so we have three controls. We have the old school, original NES, the NES Mini, brand new, and then the uh, junky off-brand controller. And I'm going to show you the differences because they do have slight differences, but believe it or not, uh, all the buttons and everything are pretty much interchangeable. So, let's see. There's the old school one. Here's the, the new one. And here's the knockoff junk. But you can just tell by looking. There's not a lot going on in there. And uh, let's see. Take it apart so I can show you the differences. Oops, there goes the D-pad, which is filthy dirty. It probably wouldn't hurt to clean that. And oh, let's see. Trying to keep it all the same here. Uh, hold on. Oh, this one requires a screw. All right, let me get this all situated and we'll go over the main differences so you can. Okay, so inside you can see, I mean, these are almost identical, if not completely identical. Uh, the only thing different about the NES Mini the brand new one is, uh, for some reason, the rubber pad is not over here. But my thought on this is uh, th this is what they would use on the Nintendo Switch or, I don't know, OEM quality versus uh, rebuild kits you get online that it just doesn't feel the same. It, I can't explain it. The, it requires a lot more pressure. And when you're trying to push the button fast, I don't know. It just doesn't feel the same. I don't like it. Um, even, uh, let's see, the design of the D-pad is different. Uh, hold on just a second. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, I got them opened up, and, uh, like I said before, I mean, this one's just worn out. I know a good cleaning would definitely help this. Um, but, so, looking at the cheap knockoff controller, you can see right here how loose the tolerances are on these buttons. I mean, it's... 
it's just it's just chunky um, as opposed to like the official the new see how it fits perfectly inside of this casing right here it completely surrounds the button versus there's nothing I guess it'd be better if I show right here this completely encloses the A and B buttons at the top and the bottom so there's less room for it's just less slop in the button play is all there is to it and then um, over here this d-pad it it just feels a little bit different I mean you can see the design from uh, let's see the, the NES mini right here I don't know this is a newer style I guess compared to the old style it has a more of a, a larger ball pivot so I guess this is optional because believe it or not this uh, d-pad would work in either shell whichever one you prefer um, I don't know it's pretty close but uh, even on the old one it does the buttons still are a little bit different but I did notice this one the tolerance this one does fit a lot tighter there's less tolerance for this to wiggle around versus this one so I don't know if maybe that's a design they improved on for this so maybe that's something good maybe not I don't know to give you a little bit more pivot but for sure, this one has the biggest, I guess you could say, pivot ball rounded off edge. This one's a little bit sharper designed. And this one seems to stick out the furthest. But anyway, so let's go ahead and swap all the parts over. We're going to put all the new parts. Um, well, actually, we're just going to take the, the, I guess you call it the microchip, put it in this shell, and then go ahead and swap this over like that just so it's not a still a good controller you can use on the NES Mini if, if possible, if, if needed, I'm sorry. So, all right, let's swap them over. All right, so now we're gonna put it back together and all we gotta do, I just took these apart to show you, you really don't even have to do this if you're doing it yourself, you just leave all this together. I uh, just put the little silicone pads back in place, like so. And then instead of putting the new microchip, microchip from the NES Mini back in, we're gonna take the old school one right here, give it a little flipperoo here. And just lay it down on top. Let me get this lined up here, like so. Let me just double check this alignment on this D-pad. Uh, I think that's as good as it's going to get. All right, and you just route the wire back the way it's supposed to go. And uh, give me, let's see, well. All right. And then we're going to put the cover back on. We should have a new OEM controller from 1985 or 80. I don't know what year it came from. So. All right, let's put it back together. Okay, so actually, it's been months since I've rebuilt the first one, so I kind of forgot what the problem was. So everything does pretty much swap over. There are differences on the back side, I forgot to show you. So on the new style NES Mini, it has this layout to reinforce the D-pad. Um, so that would be sitting like this reverse. And the old school one just has this piece right here where it pivots. And it kind of looks the same over here on the cheap controller. But the problem it seems seems to be is that I think these are a little, for some reason, the new NES Mini is a little bit shorter. Um, it's definitely shorter. And uh, I guess it, it will work, but I don't think anybody would enjoy it. Probably scoot it back a little bit. Um, but also this... You get like a straight edge. Uh, see if you can see in the camera. This seems to be perfectly flush if you look right here. As far as the depth, um, this is pretty much flush. And over here on this one, it's it's not quite. It's close, but trust me, it's not quite touching. I don't know if that's it. I think it's more of the design of the D-pad. So the purpose of all this jabbering right now is. Uh, don't use the new NES Mini D-pad. We're going to use the old school one. So I think now that 
I'm doing it on camera. I remember uh, this was the better option and uh, we're going to go this way. All right, so give me just a second. I'm going to put it back together. All right, so I got this back together and I went ahead and chose to just keep the D-pad that originally came with the uh, NES Mini, the brand new one, because it felt weird because uh, I didn't have it tightened all the way. I'm doing this live, kind of. I mean, like I said, I've done this months ago and I forgot since then. Shoot, that was back in uh, before Christmas time. So anyway, and now I'm going to take the brand new NES and see how it works in the old school casing. So give me a second, I'll put that, that back together. All right guys, so here we go. This is a old school, it's the, uh, what would you call it? The NES 04 circuit board in a brand new NES mini controller. And like I said, I changed my mind. I decided to keep all the brand new parts, all the brand new buttons and pads in here. Uh, I don't know what I was talking about before. It, it feels just fine. The buttons are extremely responsive. Look at that speed there. <laughs> Versus uh, now if I wanted to use this for the NES Mini, which I don't even have one, but if I wanted to use it, it would still work. Uh, everything feels fine. Just these pads would be better if it was replaced. Start Select and start's a little bit deeper in there i guess but uh anyway so i highly recommend if you're in the old school nintendo gaming and you're uh, pretty hardcore about it uh get you one of these and swap out uh everything you can see no longer do you have the uh nes04 label it has the uh, clv02 model number but with the correct plug right here and uh also i was going to say i love the the feel of this but my hands are pretty big so you can see how i mean i have all this gap in between here and after a while uh like when i was trying to beat ninja gaiden i felt like i was getting arthritis it's not because i like the way it i don't like the way the, the controller feels it just starts to give me like arthritis feeling so i reached out to a local dude uh and i guess he found this file online this 3d printed uh switch controller i guess i mean it seems to be the switch controller or ps5 maybe and i will say i highly recommend it i mean it gives you just so much better uh ergonomic grip and it has a little indentation for the cord and let's say this is the best way to probably play but uh sorry about all the uh blabbing i just this was just totally on the fly video just decided to make in case anybody out there is in interested in doing it so there you have it if you want to rebuild you an old school controller i would say in my opinion this is the closest way to getting to what nintendo had in mind as far as overall quality and feel and you can skip out on all this junk right here which is pretty much can go into garbage so anyway thank you for your time